There we go. Welcome, everyone. It's Wednesday, October 27th here at the beautiful Center for um, <laughs> Oakland <laughs> Center for Spiritual Living. Paul, oh, pick an adjective, right? But it is beautiful. We were just commenting during our social time about the, the cataclysmic rainy season we've had for a day and 18 hours <laughs> and boy have things bloomed out beautifully as you can see in the background our our garden is blooming gloriously and and so are our congregants so i welcome you to our wednesday mid midweek oasis our wednesday night service hello church family oh i love saying that so what is our oasis? It's a place where we can be together as a community to be spiritually refreshed between our Sunday services. We present our Wednesday night services in a satsang style with the intention that these gatherings be informal, intimate, and rich. Now satsang is generally a, um, um, a large group listening to a, um, a gifted speaker. Well, we're bringing you a gifted speaker and we will have a dialogue as well and some sharing tonight. That's part of the plan. Our annual theme is Timeless Wisdom Evolutionary Vision. And our monthly theme for October is Going Further Together. If you're joining us for the first time, we welcome you, whether you're watching this on our YouTube channel after the fact or, or joining us here tonight, please visit our homepage and look for our Village News newsletter sign up. Just plug in your email address and you'll get all the news that's, that you need to know how to can stay connected with us for our many, many activities that we have during the week. It is in the lower left-hand corner of the homepage. Also, please note to improve the quality of our transmission, our Zoom team will mute your camera and microphone I encourage you to do that right now if you haven't done that already. And please stay tuned for our special and important announcements of things that are coming up in the next week. We're going through a very special and exciting period here at the center as we start launching ourselves into um, um, tithing month or pledge month to commit for our, our finances for next year. And also in the, in the preparation of seeking a new minister or, or co-ministers, that process will be starting. I'll tell you more about that at the end. So stay tuned for that. Judith, I'm running early, so I'm gonna bring you on early if you don't mind. I'd like to welcome our speaker tonight. She's one of our practitioners. She's a regular here on Wednesday nights. Her name is Judith Roberts. Judith, we welcome you. And I believe your talk title is I'll Meet You There. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, wonderful. So we welcome you. Judith, you always bring me a nugget, something I'm going to remember from Wednesday to Wednesday. So <laughs> um, I'm sure that will happen tonight. So at this point, I'll turn it over to you, ask you to, before you launch into your presentation, if you'll open us up in prayer. Okay. Thank you, Paul. So I'd like to invite everyone to take a, take a deep breath. Knowing that this is the breath of the divine. This is the breath of source. This is the breath of God. And that that one is right here, right now. That one graces everyone here with its presence. It is love, it is compassion, it is kindness, it is goodness. And that goodness permeates this evening. And I know that everyone who is participating tonight receives what they need to receive, receives a nugget, receives inspiration, and leaves here fuller and richer and opened up and more expansive. I know that everyone is here by divine appointment and that numbers are of no consequence, that who is here is who is meant to be here and that all is well. And so I bless this evening and everybody who's participating either as a um, visitor or as a congregant or somebody, any, everyone who's helping 
with the behind the scenes to produce this event as we meet virtually. And so with that, I give thanks and I say, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. And so my talk tonight is called, as, as Paul mentioned, it's called, I Will Meet You There. It's, um, I think the title, the title was given to me, and I believe the title comes from a Rumi poem, which is pretty well known and, and famous. You probably have heard of it, but if not, I'm going to share a segment of the poem that that line comes from. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Rumi too, about his background and also share uh, a translation of the poem that is different than we commonly know of. Uh, and I'll explain that, I'll explain why. And I'm going to share a few, um, a few quotes and talk about this, um, this, this idea of, I will meet you there. And then I'm going to invite you to, um, we're going to go into breakout rooms and invite you to share with one another um, uh, about some certain questions that I'm going to pose and ask uh, that I think are going to take us deeper into this topic. And then we'll reconvene after each person has about four minutes, we'll reconvene in the main room, <laughs> our virtual main room, and uh, share, share some of what we shared in the individual, in the breakout sessions, and, uh, and talk about it, and hopefully deepen and deepen our awareness, and uh, hopefully um, gain some inspiration from each other. And then I'm going to close with a poem or with a, a reading, and then I will turn it back over to Paul uh, for some announcements, and he'll he'll um, he'll he'll bring us home. Um, so our our program is seven to eight, approximately. Yeah, seven to eight is what we plan on. So um, let me start with uh, a little bit about Rumi before I go into the 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 poem itself. Rumi was a um, he was a judge, and he is mainly known as a Sufi mystic and a poet. And he lived in Iran, what is now Iran, um, until 1273, when he passed away at age 66. Uh, he's commonly known as Jalal ad-Din Muhammad Rumi. And Jalal ad-Din means glory of the faith. And Rumi indicates the place in Iran that he is from, but he's commonly known to us just as Rumi. Uh, he wrote his poems. He's, he's read and known throughout the world as a poet, and he wrote his poems mainly in Persian, but he wrote some also in um, Turkish, Arabic, and Greek. So he was quite educated and erudite. And his poems are, um, have been translated into many languages. So now I'm going to share a PowerPoint and uh, go into uh, some of the, room, the Rumi poem that we're talking about tonight that is informing our, uh, our, our subject, our topic. Okay, so again, the title is, I Will Meet You There. And the, the, the part of the poem, the excerpt of this long poem that so many people have already heard um, is, is this, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field, I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. And this um, is an interpretation by somebody named Coleman Barks. There's a little bit of um, controversy about this because they call it a colonialist interpretation 
because what he originally said was taken out. He, he has a reference to Islam and that was excerpted from this interpretation. So I'm going to share with you another translation that is closer to the original. And that is beyond Islam and unbelief, there is a desert plain. For us, there is a passion in the midst of that expanse. The knower of God who reaches there will prostrate in prayer, for there is neither Islam nor unbelief, nor anywhere in that place. So in both of these, they're talking about a place. In one, it says a desert plain, and in the other, it says, um, a field, but it's beyond polarity. It's a field that's beyond polarity, um, beyond Islam and unbelief and beyond right doing and wrong doing. So I was walking with a friend recently, a few days ago when I was contemplating this talk and I quoted the line about out, out beyond wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field, I will meet you there. And I asked her, what do you think the field is? And she said, being. It's being, it's pure beingness. And I really, I really liked that. It just, it just resonated with me that that's what it's about, that it's just pure beingness. And that reminded me of a quote of Ernest Holmes, which I'm going to share with you. And Ernest Holmes said, universal principles are never respecters of persons. The universe has no favorites. Therefore, it is written, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And so I think here Ernest is saying the same thing, that the, that the beauty of life, the grace of life, the qualities of the divine that live within us are accessible and available to everyone. And there's no, there's no distinction. It's not something we merit. It's not something we earn. It's not, doesn't matter what kind of a life we've lived. You know, if we've been quote unquote saint or sinner, that that the 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 um, that that what life has to offer each one of us in its richness, in its fullness, is equally available to all. And so those qualities of peace and love and compassion and strength and courage are available all the time. They're within us, they're accessible, and no one is left out and no one is denied. And so it's really helpful to remember that. It's really helpful to remember that. And I, I, I wanted to invite us to, um, to look at um, situations or, or in our own lives, but also externally of um, where, we might know of people who have met in this field and what happened. And one of the people I was going to mention, and as an example is Daryl Davis. Daryl Davis is a black blues musician and author who has become known for something extraordinary that's unfolded in his life. He was um, in, a, in a bar in, I don't remember what state he was in, but he was the only black person in the bar. He was playing music. He was part of a band and he was playing. And someone came up to him afterwards and told him they'd never heard uh, a black person play music like this. And where did he learn it? And he, he was surprised. And they had a conversation about the origins of the music and Anyway, they ended up striking up a conversation. He would he and the person said, "Let me know anytime you're playing here." And he played every six weeks. So he let them he let that man know, and he came every time. And so they kind of got to know each other. And along the way, this man told him that he was a member of the clan, 
And and Daryl at first laughed. He didn't believe it, but then he finally realized that it was that it was true. And so he decided to like try to, you know, get to know this person a little bit. And he invited him for a drive. And the man accepted because now they had they had they had formed a, a not a friendship yet, but a relationship. And they could talk to each other. And so he he took this man for a drive. He he drove. He took this man for a drive. And during the drive, the man said, uh, did you know that um, all black men uh, carry a gene for violence? And Daryl said, well, you know, I've never committed any violence. I've never robbed a store or pulled a gun on anybody or shot anybody. And and the man said, well, that's because your gene is, is, um, is latent, dormant. And so Daryl thought for a minute. <laughs> and then he said, did you know that all white men carry a gene to be serial killers? And the guy said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, can you think of any black men who are serial killers? And he couldn't, couldn't think of any. He said, yeah, they're all white. Charles Manson, um, Jeffrey Dahmers, you know, he, and he listed about five of them. And the man said, well, I'm not a, I'm not a serial killer. And Daryl said, well, that's because the gene in you is, is dormant. It's latent. And the guy said, well, that's ridiculous. And then Daryl said, yes, it is ridiculous. But it's no more ridiculous than what you said to me. And the man went silent. He just went silent. And I don't know what transpired the rest of the drive, but six months later, that man left the clan and um, not only left the clan, but sent Daryl his, his clan robes. And so I read an article online about Daryl and I, I quoted part of it here. And he sa it says, but Davis, uh, has had clear success. He claims to have been directly responsible for up to 60 people leaving the Klan and indirectly responsible for 200. When they left the group, many did so with the simple gesture and a powerful symbol, or with, with a simple gesture and a powerful symbol. They gave Davis their KKK robes. And here he is with some of the robes. So this is an example of, this is a dramatic example, but it's an example of somebody meeting, uh, meeting somebody where they could have been in total polarity um, and meeting them, what I would say, meeting them in the field, meeting them in the field beyond right doing and wrongdoing, meeting them in the field of being, meeting them in the field of, um, beyond belief and unbelief. And so I just wanted to invite us as we go into the um, the breakout rooms, I'm gonna show you on the next slide what I want to us to consider is for you each to consider a time and share with the other person in your in your breakout room, a time or times when you met someone in the field beyond right doing or wrong doing or beyond belief and unbelief and share share your experience of that when you had that experience and then also share what was the value of meeting in the field and what was the result so i'd like to invite us to to go into the breakout rooms and then when we reconvene in the main room to share some of the experiences you shared uh, with your partner in the room, because I think we can all, we're all going to be very enriched and probably very inspired by each other's experiences. And I'll share one of mine, and I'll also share one of um, another practitioner I talked to who, who told me I could share her experience. So, um, Peter, can you, um, can you send us, oh, I, I'll stop sharing now. And okay. you can send us into the breakout rooms. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let's 
see. Barbara. Why didn't Barbara go? Where is she? Don't move me, Peter. Don't move you? No, I'm playing with the slide. Constance sent me a slide. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see, Constance. Okay, I'm going to move you to another room and then just take yourself out of that room. Okie doke. Uh, let's see. Alice is still here. Yeah, I know. Oh, because she's uh, she's the, the yeah, the, the team, part of the team. Well, the team could no. go to a room too. No. She's no. supposed to be in her, she's supposed to be in a room. Okay. She is supposed to be in a room. Yeah, let's see. All right, Alice. Oh, I'm okay, Peter. Don't worry about me. <laughs> this is Alice. Hi, Don't Alice. worry about me. I'm okay. Alice, when we reconvene, are you are you available to share um, something, an experience of yours? Um, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> and Peter, how about you sharing the one that you shared with me that was so beautiful? Oh well, I yeah, it was a patient of mine. No, no, yeah. not right now. When when everybody comes back to the room. Okay. 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 And I see Zoe is here. Oh, yeah, Zoe, so I, I couldn't get you, in, I couldn't put somebody in a room with you. So that's, I'm glad that's you quite I'm, all glad, right. I'm glad you bailed. <laughs> I, I, I had a great conversation with myself. Oh, good. That's that's good to always always have somebody to talk to, no matter what. Peter, I, I, I can feel the same way. If you want to move me, you can now. I finished doing that slide. Oh, well, I think everybody, oh, let's see. Okay, I'll put you in Constance's room then. Let's see, that's room six. Oh, shoot. Yeah. No, five, there we go. Huh. Oh, well, let's see. Zo? Yes, ma'am. Um, since you've had this this long and rich talk with yourself, um, <laughs> <laughs> when we come back to the main room, can you share um, some of you, one of your experiences or insights around this? Well, I actually. I did not have a particularly productive conversation with myself. <laughs> um, well, my <laughs> well, I just found out that my granddaughter has COVID, so I'm oh. kind of scattered at the moment. Very sad. Yes. I'm sorry to hear that. Hmm. You doing okay? How's she doing? Uh, symptoms are moderate. Okay. That's good. Yeah, that is good. 
and she's still at home. So she's vaccinated, I presume. No, no. She's Neither she nor her idiot husband decided that they should get vaccinated. Oh, I see. Well, hopefully she'll be okay. Yeah. So here, this is me trying my damnedest to get to that field. I, I was just thinking it doesn't sound like you've met her idiot husband yet in the field. Mm, no, no, have not. <laughs> I used to really like him. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. But, but he's it's like, it's like, oh, it's COVID. It's no big deal. Wandering in the wilderness. He's like, man. <sighs> That's what he said. He said it's COVID, no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I guess he doesn't watch the news <laughs> or read a newspaper or listen to anything except maybe Fox. I don't know. They're youngish? Yeah. Uh, 22. Oh, yeah. That's young. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Uh... That seems to be prevalent in younger folks, somewhat more than older, I guess, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. We just have to pray for their transcendence or enlightenment. Or... Yep. Their health and well being. Yep. Yeah. Well, I sort of like them to get sick enough to ponder <laughs> their plight, but I'm <laughs> ultimately survive. That's just me. <laughs> yeah. Because otherwise they'll go, oh, see it, no big deal. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. And then they project that out into everybody else, which is, you know, not true. But yeah. Ugh. Okay, people should be coming back in now. Right, about five seconds. Where did they come? Oh, that was quick. <laughs> oh, so now, um, Peter, is everybody back now? Uh, yes, everybody is back. Okay. Oh, hi, Maureen and Lulu. And yeah, I'm seeing Pete Reinhard. Nice to I, see you. I don't you. know who the cell phone person is. Freya. Freya's here. And uh, Eliza is on the phone. Oh, Eliza's on the phone? Yeah. Okay, I'll rename her. <laughs> that okay? She'll be happy to hear, the, uh, hear that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine with me. You Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Welcome back, oh. everybody. We had we had more people come in. Um, I didn't know we had as, this many people. I'm glad we do. Um, so I'd like to open this up now for people to share uh, some of their experiences that you shared in your breakout room of times that your experiences of meeting somebody in the field and also the value that it had for you or and or the result do we have any any volunteers yeah i uh it is. i have always thought of uh the field as just being the place not meeting a person for me, the field is where I meet God mm -hmm. or spirit. And so, mm -hmm. and what I have with the field is a, a feeling tone. Uh -huh. And that is, uh, it's the most amazing feeling of peace and safety and comfort and anything that I can name. And that, So I haven't had that other experience, but now uh, I appreciate thinking of that in a different way now so that I have some time to think about because I have a, the field can be 
just a place of meeting of the hearts, you know, people that I might normally have a judgment. So, and I, so I, that is my aim for having that field where I meet the people that I might normally have a, a criticism or a judgment about, I meet them with my heart open. Mm. So that is so far what I've got to go with it. And Paul, Paul told me a wonderful story about the man in the, who there's a movie about him. So I'm looking forward to meet, seeing that movie somehow. Oh, which, which movie about Daryl Davis? Yes. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. I think there is one. Yeah. I was going to yeah. mention that at the, at, a little bit later after the shares were done and see if you knew about it, Judith. I'll, I'll tell you more about it later for everybody. Yeah, thank you, Paul. And thank you. Thank you, Judith. And that's beautiful. The, the field we're talking about is a metaphor, of course. And the, um, the field that you talked about it is, is yes, that's a, that's a field. I don't think they're different, really. I think they're, <laughs> I think they're actually the same thing, probably. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else? Constance. Okay. Okay, well, um, uh, Barbara and I were in the room and it was interesting because we had similar things. When I was younger, um, I worked with uh, battered women and um, in a shelter situation. Uh, and their hus often the men would call the house looking for their wives. And of course, we would never tell them whether they were there or not. What happened is, is that um, I heard in their voices, in those men's voices, a pain that I had not expected to hear. So, um, so I, you know, if, if you would have asked me how I would have reacted to that before I started to work, you know, I would have told you I would be judgmental and angry, but in fact I wasn't. Um, you know, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't accept that what they done was correct, but I didn't hold them in in judgment for um, for for doing what they were doing because it was. I could hear their voices that they were doing um, uh, the best they could under under uh, circumstances that were of their own making often, but nonetheless, they were doing the best. And the other situation that came up while I was doing that work was when women would return home. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people who were working in that field would get really upset and angry at the women, saying, what are you doing, you know? And I never, it didn't, and I think because every time a woman did that and I was able to talk to her about what she was looking for and how she knew she was going to find it and you know what she would do if it didn't work you know uh, i think every time that happened i i was able to forgive myself a little bit for for coming back into a relationship that wasn't healthy as well um so that those are that was my example and, and i can think of others of that kind of situation uh, where I found compassion where I wouldn't have expected it to be there. Hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Constance. Yeah, I really, I really uh, caught the word non-judgment. That seemed to be a key word. Um, anyone else? Well, Judith, I'll tell you a little bit about the movie if you want, because it was interesting that you brought up Daryl Davis. And one of the challenges that we had when Reverend Jeff started was that everybody wanted a lot of, to do a lot of things. And of course, we, you know, when you're a new senior minister, Reverend Jerry's probably hearing this now and the whoever becomes our next senior minister will get a hundred opinions about how it should be and, and what, should, what processes and, and what pro, uh, products we should present and blah, 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 and all that. And one of them was, let's do a movie night. And um, so he said, okay. And he found a volunteer and her name was Eileen to present movie nights. 
The challenge was, even though she had a hundred suggestions um, <laughs> for different types of movies, you can't just show a movie with royalties and things like that involved. You have to have the explicit permission of the movie house to, to, to air it, whether you do it for profit or nonprofit. And some of the fees that they would charge or they demand a percentage with a minimum of a door charge. And it was just challenging for her. Someone recommended from, from Diversity Circle Accidental Courtesy. This is Daryl Davis's movie mm -hmm. um, about race in America. It's a documentary about that process that you brought up tonight. So she researched it and her and her husband watched the movie and, and that was part of the, the, the process was, was it appropriate for the, the intent of what our center um, wants to, um, does it fall within our principles of what we want to present? And it did. Mm -hmm. And they were all excited, but there was no owner of the movie. There was no production house. So she contacted Daryl Davis directly. Wow. And he responded directly to her and to the diversity circle and said, absolutely, you can use it 100%, 100% free. Hmm. Talk about meeting. Yeah. Right? And then you brought him up today specifically. We They were able to show on one of our first movie nights because that's what Reverend Jeff wanted to bring as a, as a product of our center that many people said they wanted was that movie. Mm -hmm. And and so it fulfilled so many needs in our mm -hmm. community. But I, I'm going to say there were about 40 or 50 people there. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a great, wonderful um, um, ability for us to, to bond as a community on a subject that we that was very, very important to hear. Mm -hmm. So um, Accidental Courtesy, it's a documentary um, mm -hmm. by Daryl Davis, and I think it's available out there. Um, if you are interested. So not only did your story benefit us, his story benefited us as well. <laughs> yeah, I think I was there, Paul. It was quite a long time ago, but I think I yeah. did see the documentary. Yeah, and it was very rich. I remember very, that. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, anyone else want to share what happened in there or something that came up in their breakout room? About, Maureen? Um, Maureen French? Maureen? Yeah. Hi. So actually, this came up after the breakout room, um, but the way in the way that uh, Constance was explaining her experience, it really kind of uh, struck me because I attended a talk about race conscious, uh, you know, racial um, anti-racial project, you know, uh, in my community, yeah. and. Um, one they presented and it was about how they were sharing about on next door right you know the next door the app mm -hmm. and about how a white woman these were the two presenters a white woman and a black woman and they both lived in this same neighborhood but the white woman's experience in the neighborhood was different than the black woman's experience in the neighborhood. And so they were presenting and they said, two truths can happen at once. Now in our idea, our idea of the one, right? There's one whole truth. So I kind of see like that's the field, right? Because we're in the field of truth. We know the truth for everybody. But in the humanness of it all, they had these, these different truths, right? But they were able to meet together and to, in that bigger truth, to create this presentation um, to demonstrate that these two things can happen at one time, but yet there is this greater truth, this greater one. So mm -hmm. um, that is what I um, thought about and wanted to say that, that these truths can be these 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 realities or these human things going on right 
are right. different than this than this larger truth. And so when you can meet with that larger truth with the people that you are interacting with, you can move mountains, you know? Yeah. So thank you. I think that's true. Thank you, Maureen. Um, move mountains, yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask Peter. Peter and I met yesterday on by phone and talked about this a little bit. And Peter, you shared with me an experience that I was wondering if you could share with the group here, because it was it it was um, it was meaningful. You know, it was a really powerful one. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I uh, when I was working, I, I worked as a dental hygienist for a long time, and I had one patient who I, a lot of people. Um, I would see every six months and I got to know this guy fairly well. And he was a conservative Republican <laughs> and I'm a liberal Democrat. So we had some interesting conversations between times that I was cleaning his teeth. And it was time that I looked forward to uh, talking with him because we both kidded each other, but we both had a respect for listening to what the other one had to say. And it honestly, was the only time I had, well, fruitful discussions with somebody who was from a different world than I am. I and mean, he was a property owner. He, you know, he 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 lived in a different world. He he was a, uh, but he was a he was a good guy. He was he was white like I was. Um, so we had, I think we had similar experiences growing up. I don't know. We didn't talk about our our history. We mostly talked about just political stuff and you know kind of things with the family and things. So I, I felt like it was a great opportunity for us to really communicate with each other and, and explore what that other person is like without putting up barriers uh, that we so often do. Uh, so that was uh, something that when, when Judith mentioned it, that immediately came to my mind. I said, yeah, yeah, I remember that guy. He's, he's passed away now, but, um, and I'm retired, but, um, those were good experiences that I had, um, along with with other people that I I got to know, but not quite with that sort of difference of opinion, you might say, where we had to kind of meet together and and kind of not go after each other, which we didn't do. So yeah. that was uh, that was something that I, I appreciated very much. Yeah, thank you, Peter. And yeah. you're reminding me of another uh, pair of opposites, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Scalia, who were usually had opposite opinions on the Supreme Court and opposite votes. And yet they were fast friends and they regularly went to the opera with each other. And they were able to have this friendship despite their um, huge, huge, you know, political differences. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, anyone else would like to share? I was wondering about Eliza. Eliza, are you here? She is here. Because she shared something with me and she told me I could quote her if she didn't if she didn't attend, but I think she is attending, but I don't see her now. Oh, Eliza, if you're here on the phone, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, now I'm unmuted. Yes, <laughs> yes. I don't even remember what I shared with you. You know, it's funny. Uh, we It seems such a short time, and I felt bad because the person that I met with um, didn't, didn't have a chance to share. Um, but anyway, uh, I thought of two things. I'll, I'll remind up. you. I'll remind you. You were you were seeing what. Um, how it affects you, what what meeting in the field does for you, how it makes you feel. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, it, it's just this feeling of oneness with everything, you know. And um, yeah, it's it's really, I was, one of the stories that I started to share, and then we all got back in the big group, was that um, I was up for a walk one time, and um some people were behind me and it was, is bothering me. You know how sometimes you sense something. And so I turned around really fast and these two girls were there and 
this one said, give me all your money. Don't even turn around. Don't even turn around. I mean, she obviously had a script, but it didn't work because I had already turned around. <laughs> and um, it, it, she just, it was just kind of funny. She was, she was really young. I don't know, about 12 or something at the most. And she was waving her hand in my face. And so I, I just grabbed her. I, I grabbed the, whatever was in her hand. I couldn't even see what it was because it was so close to my face. And I, and I pushed her arm aside and I said, what do you want? And, and she just looked at me silently. And um, I said, well, I don't have any money. I'm just out for a walk, you know. And and then I really, I said, oh, yeah, I do. I have some change or something. You know, you can have it. And I, I let go of this thing. And it was actually a, a nice blade <laughs> that I had grabbed. But it wasn't that sharp, so it, it hadn't cut me, you know. And, and then... Um, the older one behind her said, come on, let's go, let's go. And so they, they turned around and, and started walking up the hill. And, and I said, well, good luck to you. <laughs> I don't know where those words came from, but I, I think I felt sort of bad, you know, that her, her, it was like the older woman was telling her what to do and it didn't work out, you know. <laughs> I felt bad that she didn't. And I thought, I wonder what she wanted to buy with that money anyway, you know. Anyway, it was this moment where I just had this compassion for this person who was doing something that, you know, someone else had put him up to it and wasn't really doing it well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so I just felt like I wanted to wish her to have a good day the rest of the day, <laughs> even though she had just tried to rob me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, that is that is unusual. Hmm. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you, thank you, Eliza. Um, I want to share one one thing that I that I can, and then um, I think I'm going to close with. Unless there's somebody else, does somebody else have a something they like a burning yearning, something they want to share? I don't see any indication. <laughs> so, okay, then I'm going to share something that um, is an experience I have, you know, fairly often um, as a practitioner when I pray with people. And that is that I may have a, a client or somebody coming to me, um, you know, like after, like after service when we're doing prayer, it may be somebody I don't know very well. It may be somebody I've had a conflict with in the past. It may be somebody I just don't feel much rapport for. But when I open myself up to prayer, you know, we say open at the top and just and just open up and ask. The prayer comes through and it comes through from it just feels like it comes through from source. It's coming through in a way that's that's pure. And it's and it's it's for the person and I get out of the way. And I think that what this what this field is largely when we when we are able to find ourselves in the field or go to the field, the metaphorical field, that we are putting our egos aside, our ego investment, our ego identity, our positionality. Um, you know, our, our, our <laughs> need to be right about something, we're putting all of that aside and we're, and we're meeting there. And that's what happens in prayer, that it's just, it's just, it just comes through from source. And I, and it is an experience of oneness, um, as Eliza said, and at least it is for me. And it's such a beautiful feeling. And it's so important, I think, to know that it's there that it's available, you know, and we can, we can, we're, we're reminding each other of it today, that, that, um, that is possible, that, that, that out beyond right doing and wrong doing, there is a field, and I can meet you there, or I will meet you there, or out beyond belief and unbelief, uh, which was the other translation, it said, uh, beyond Islam and unbelievers, there is a field, and it's just, it's just so beautiful to know that it's there and it's there for all of us. So I'm going to close with a, um, a, a quote. It's a, it's a little brief story about His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. 
and it's called the Dalai Lama on Fighting Back. And this was from um, May 17th of 2003. And I just love this. It's short, but I think it's very, it speaks to what we're talking about tonight. Um, it says, at the end of a talk, someone from the audience asked the Dalai Lama, why didn't you fight back against the Chinese? The Dalai Lama looked down, swung his feet just a bit, and looked back up at us and said with a gentle smile, well, war is obsolete, you know. Then after a few moments, his face grave, he said, of course, the mind can rationalize fighting back, but the heart, the heart would never understand. Then you would be divided in yourself, the heart and the mind, and the war would be inside you. And so we've been talking about these external situations and external relationships and meeting somebody, you know, a, a, a physical person outside, meeting them in the metaphorical field, but it's also inside. You know, it's also inside the conflicts within ourselves and what he says, the, the conflict between the heart and the mind, that we can go beyond that also by going to the field, the place of oneness, the place of peace, and reaching for that in whatever ways that we do. You know, we all have our own, our own ways. Um, but, the, but just remembering that it's there, it's there for us internally, as well as it is there for us externally in relationship to others. So with that, I wanna thank you for coming tonight and attending and sharing so much. It's, I've, I've, I'm taking away a lot from this and now I wanna uh, turn it back over to Paul. Yay, Judith, thank you everybody. Let's thank her in a way that we, she can see somehow. Thank you, Judith, so much. I have, a com I have a comment for a nugget for you that I'm gonna put, add this to my little, little gem purse of nuggets. You gave me a new perspective about the idea of creating a world that works for everyone. We talk about it and we spend all of our time going to church to learn how to do it. But, but the idea that we could meet beyond right doing and wrong doing seems like a, a really good trajectory. Yeah. Um, um, so that's my nugget for that. You gave me a newfound perspective on creating a world that works for everyone. So thank you. Thank you, Paul. That's my nugget. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dr. Barbara, if you're ready, let's do some announcements. We got some great things coming up this weekend. So I, I, I want you um, to hear them. Are you ready, Barbara? I hope. <laughs> let's see. There we go. Thank you, madam. So what's coming up on Sunday, October 31st? Did you know that was Halloween, y'all? It is, and we're having church. <laughs> so we conclude our theme of going further together. Emeritus practitioners, Dodie Cheney Fernandez, Carmen West Jefferson, Susan Brecker, Karen Peterson, and Jesse Pittman will be talking about the wisdom each has gained by being a practitioner of religious science going further together. This will be a wonderfully rich discussion. I can hardly wait for Sunday. You can join us physically and in person in the sanctuary or watch the service live on live stream or YouTube. Service will start at 1030. Please know that if you'll be joining us on Sunday in person, everyone is required to wear a mask inside all of our buildings and we will be practicing social distancing. Then next Wednesday, November 3rd, we begin the new monthly theme of Breathe in the View. And I think Judith has kind of set the tone for that already for us. Um, breathe in the view that she presented tonight. 
um, practitioner of ministerial student, Teresa Gardner, will be taking on and talking on the view from here. Meditation is at 6.30 and service is at 7. And Wednesday services will continue in Zoom. <clears throat> the community co-creation process is coming up on Friday, October 29th. That's this Friday at 6 p.m. and it'll be on Zoom. This process is the first step in creating the collective energy to call in our new spiritual leader or leaders. The co-creation facilitators are asking that everyone be identified on the call. This means setting your Zoom window with your name, not your favorite sports team or your favorite mythological creature. <laughs> if you will be attending by phone, please send Constance Chapman an email with the phone number you'll be using. Her email is constance at oaklandcsl.org. You also need to download the documents from the homepage of the website or watch the videos before that evening. So it's a very important evening if you wanna participate in the process. And one way or another, you will get named correctly as you come into Zoom. I know Constance will work diligently, but it would help if you could reach out in advance to her. <clears throat> this Sunday, our youth and family team led by Jackie Onapetti is hosting a celebration of Halloween, Dia de los Muertas, and All Saints with a movie and treats. There'll be social distancing and fun, and the kids will show off their costumes and best face masks. To give you an idea of how much fun they're already having, please listen and enjoy this recording that Barbara's going to play of one of our children. Are you muted, Barbara? Barbara, you have to unmute your 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 uh, yourself. Sorry, everybody. I thought it was it played on my end. That's okay. It's going to come. It's worth the wait, darling. It's worth I the wait. I apologize. I thought it was playing for you, too. <laughs> I didn't know it wasn't playing. There's a monster in the closet. The ghosts are on the wall. So why do you keep on telling me there's nothing there at all? I know that there is clear to me. I see them every night. And all I want is when I'm scared you come and hold me tight. The teacher told a story. See how much fun they're having? She learned it in one I'm sorry. She learned it in one sitting. So please join us on Sunday. Um, the kids will start at 1030 and after service the adults can go into the room. Everyone is encouraged to bring pictures of their loved ones for the Dia de los Muertos table and join the kids after the service. 10.30 to 2 on Sunday, lots to do there. A week from this Sunday on November 7th, after the service, COM, the Compassion Attention to Loss Ministry Group, will be meeting at 12.30 in person and in Zoom. It'll be a hybrid session um, to discuss the embrace of compassion. So Demiro has mastered hybrid. Yay. So um, we can meet in person and in Zoom um, for the monthly calm Sunday, November 7th. Details are on the events page. We are now four days to the end of the pledge month and only a quarter of the way to our goal. Please make your 
commitment today. It is so appreciated and allows the Board of Trustees to plan for 2022. We are an incredible village. We have been through a lot together and together we will go further. The link for the online pledge card is on the home page now right at the top, easily accessible, and it's also on the events page. So we're going to take a minute and look at our chart where we're at and it's, we're going to read the money affirmative prayer that Constance provided. So follow along as we move through these next three slides. Let's do the money treatment by Dr. Raymond Charles Barker. I now subconsciously accept this treatment. There is only one creative cause, God. There is only one mind, God. There is only one life, God. There is only one substance, God. This present universe is the glory of God. It is moving, flexible, fluidic creation. It is alive with the life, the abundance, and the richness of God. I abide in prosperity. My mind created me in order that it may act through me. And mind created me in order that it might act through me. Therefore, I am receptive to its abundance. I am receptive to its circulation in my life in the form of money. Money is God's idea of circulation in my world of finance. I accept this idea completely. I appreciate this idea. I like it. Money being God in action is absolute good. It is wholesome. It is a blessing to me and I am now prospered with it. I have no fear of lack for I believe that I have plenty of money. It is God's activity in my world. It is God's activity in my bank account. It is God's activity in my investments. It is God's activity in everything to which I lay my hands. This money is flowing. This money is free. I do not attempt to lock it up. I do not put a fence around it. It is God's money. I let it flow in, I let it flow out. As I release it, I know that it comes back to me, pressed down, shaken together and running over. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I am now free in money. I rejoice in it, I appreciate it and I thank God for it. I have money forevermore and so it is. As we move from that, please, please, please nominate your favorite nonprofit organization for our 2022 program. Let's keep this wonderful program alive. To do so, we need your application. Applications are on the right hand side of the events page. So, as we've thought so much tonight about that field, I remember what Reverend E should could have written that affirmation. She says, love your money, Paul, and money will love you. So we love our money and we graciously give it and we donate it to our center so it does good work. So I just take a moment and I say, in addition to that lovely treatment, joyously I give with an attitude of abundance knowing that as I give, I do receive. We have many ways to give here at the center of our time our treasure and our talent. We have five ways, four are on the website. You can donate with the button or you can look at the address and send a check. You can text an amount to 510-327-3431 or you can use Zelle and Zelle your donation to giving at oaklandcsl.org. And the fifth way, if you're so inclined, you can come to church. We have an offering basket. You can leave your offering in on the way out after Sunday service. I'm so grateful for all and everything that everyone gives to me here at the center, helping me to be a better person. I know that I'm better for my association here. So I, I enjoy donating. 
so that I can keep this place going for everyone else to enjoy as well as myself. It's my investment. And I'm, I'm as he said, shaking it up. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for their work tonight. The lovely Judith Roberts, a practitioner with her, her meditation and her talk tonight. Thank you for the nugget, my dear. I appreciate it. Another investment going in my purse. Um, thank you for that. I wanna thank Reverend Jerry for being here and doing our grounding prayer. And I wanna thank the Zoom team because without them, I don't look or sound as good as I do. And it, that's a pretty big stretch for them, but miracles do happen. <laughs> and they're called Peter and Barbara and Alice. And of course, Constance has been back there taking care of business with us. So I'm grateful to all of you tonight. I thank you for joining us. And at this time, if you're willing, Judith, can you close us out in prayer? Yes, I can. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> so knowing that spirit is guiding all of us here, every moment, every breath, and that what we have received tonight is a gift from spirit, that it is its grace, its goodness, its kindness, its love, and that that love is present every moment, that that love fills us. And so as we move into our next, our next stage tonight, whether it's on the road or whether it's whether it's uh, something with the family or whether it's having dinner, whatever it is tonight, that we are full, we are blessed. And I give thanks for this. I give thanks for everybody who participated tonight in any way, knowing that they were guided here by spirit and continue to be guided in every moment of their day and every moment of their life. So I give thanks, I bless each one, and I release my word into the law, knowing that this is so, knowing that it's done, and so it is. Amen. And so it is. <laughs>